The remnants of Hurricane Ian are expected to be a tropical depression on Saturday when it travels over North Carolina. UTEP playing at Charlotte that day. The miners preparing for what will be some very soggy conditions by dunking their footballs in tubs of water today at practice. You got to be prepared for anything, and UTEP would like to establish the run if they can, much like they did last week when they upset Boise State by running the ball over 50 times for almost 200 yards. The last three years, they're five and one when they rush for over 175 yards. Make no mistake, the rain will be a factor in this one, a big factor, and the miners' play calling could reflect the conditions. You know, we'll start off calling what we're going to call, and then we'll see how that execution goes. And if it starts affecting the execution, you know, then then we would, you know, temper it. You know, uh, not necessarily to run or pass, because as I've mentioned before, sometimes it's uh, maybe sometimes easier to throw the ball in the rain, depending on footing. You know, if you're not getting footing, it makes it hard to run the ball. Ball security. Um, this whole week of practice, I've just been taking off my gloves to try to hold the ball and see how it feels. And they've been waiting the ball as well, so we can get a feel for it. So by the time the game comes, you know, we can have a, have a feel for it during the game. That's scheduled for a 4 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff in Charlotte. As of now, no travel issues are expected for the Miners. On another note, two UTEP players are from the Tampa Bay area where Hurricane Ian made landfall on Wednesday. Linebacker Tyree Snight is from Lakeland. Tight end Zach Fryer is from Venice. Both of their families rode out the storms. They're doing all right today, but the pair was nervous about it over the last few days. It was a little stressful, to be honest, because I knew it was going to be rough. And last time we, we kind of got hit like this, we lost our house. So it was just, and my mom's at home alone. She doesn't have a man in the house to kind of help with that. So I just kind of was always checking up on her yesterday. Well, I just making sure they still have power and like electricity throughout the whole hurricane. But it didn't really hit us overall bit, so they still got everything situated, everything good for us. Fryer's family actually lost its home in 2004 in Hurricane Charlie, but happy to report with Fryer and Knight's family is doing all right today. No significant damage for either of them. Over to the